Hi folks, welcome to chapter 12. Uh, this is a little bit of, uh, of a short chapter and, and on short notice because I, I really am so, this, I'm finding what I just discovered so cool that I wanted to, to share it, which is that I am, excuse me, I'm trying to do um, some measurement and alignment of my mill and I will readily admit that I am probably confusing the words of leveling and tramming and uh, just adjusting and such, but I'll just show you what I've got is a situation where my uh, dial test indicator is in a um, fixture here and when I sweep it and when I put it on the block over here at zero, or excuse me, on the x-axis I am zeroed and when I swing it over here like so, I am off by about two thousandths. So what I had read is that you need to adjust the way the mill rests on the stand and by shimming it. And I, well, the reason I'm so excited is that I really wasn't looking forward to doing this, um, thinking that it was going to be a sort of a daunting endeavor. Um, but what I want to show you is the way that I read on how to uh, lift the mill up in each corner is by taking a one half by 13 inch bolt, cutting it down to size, tapping it into a piece of aluminum, and then you just use that with a wrench to lift the bolt out of the piece of aluminum and it lifts the mill. It's actually really easy. Um, what I cannot believe, and I, I, let me, I need to switch over to the tripod to show you, is the result. Okay, here we go. I've got the camera on the tripod aimed at the dial test indicator. Now when I started adjusting it, it was further off. It was closer to, I think, three and a half thousand. So it's down to two. But what I want to show you is I thought that when you adjusted this bolt, which is the equivalent of a temporary shim, it basically lets you figure out which corner you need to adjust and approximately by how much, and then I'll shim it later. But I thought you would have to perhaps sort of wait and let the mill stresses in the casting base adjust to it. But I'll show you and I'll talk through it, which is basically, as I loosen this screw, which is lifting the left front side of the mill up, look at the dial test indicator. That was about, about an eighth of a turn on the wrench, moved it about a thousand, so I'll move it another eighth of a turn, not quite. One more. Now look at that. Now I'm sure there's more work to do here, but um, in the interest of helping share my story about getting this mill adjusted, I just wanted to show you two things. One, the uh, way to do this is to tap a one half by 13 inch piece of aluminum. And, uh, and by the way, I, I borrowed that idea from the fellow who posted his website about moving his Tormach into his basement. Um, so by all means, that was his credit. And if I recall, he actually got the idea from Greg over at Tormach, so uh, by all means I'm passing along the knowledge here, but also don't be scared, this is actually proving to be fun, uh, so I will keep you guys posted on how my tramming goes. Before the video ended I thought I would take a second to show you the part I made, just a piece of scrap aluminum, and the, the only thing I really did, um, I actually milled the bolt down um, just so it had a nice finish and it wouldn't mar anything. And then I actually milled the top of the bolt head too because it was one of the Home Depot bolts which has a number stamped in the top and I didn't want that to be um, a hindrance as I was twisting the bolt um, underneath the cast iron base. But it worked great. It doesn't actually take that much strength to move the uh, mill base up uh, with this simple method. And I think um, I just did some experimenting tonight, and I'm actually going to get some shims and do this in a couple days for good. And I think I may need to shim in two different two different feet um, for both the X and the Y. And if I do that, I may actually make a second one of these so that I can have two of them moving at once because otherwise it's quite iterative, and I think it would be a pain. But I'll be sure to keep you updated. Thanks.